All right, buffalo. So you've never had buffalo before, right? I think it's a fairly new thing for New Zealand. This is the eye fillet from a buffalo. Now, what I'm going to serve with it is I'm going to, I'm going to make a play on a caprese salad. You know, the famous Italian salad. We use buffalo mozzarella, fresh, beautiful tomato slice, some fresh basil, olive oil, and a good balsamic. Well, I'm going to do it hot and serve it with a piece of buffalo eye fillet. Anna, come up and help me, and we're going to do some sautéing of some onions, because we're going to make a tomato sauce, and we're going to give that tomato sauce 5% extra magic, maybe even 10%. And we're going to have a side dish of cream spinach. I've got the Jervois Steakhouse, and like we serve steaks, 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 but we serve a lot of cream spinach. Everybody loves cream spinach, so I want to show you how to make it. It's so easy, it's ridiculous. Alrighty, so... The key for a good tomato sauce is, first up, is plenty of olive oil. I'm going to put about 100 mils of olive oil in here. So I don't want to be shy. Over here for the cream spinach, I'm going to get 25 grams of butter in there. We're going to melt that. So we're cooking two separate onions, one for the tomato sauce, one for the cream spinach. So in you go. And we want to soften those down. Cream spinach is so good. Yum and so unhealthy, but we're having, <laughs> we're having buffalo that's really healthy, so we're sort of averaging things out, right? So I'm gonna let you keep an eye on both of these for me, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start trimming up this beautiful buffalo eye fillet. And I wanna take the chain off first, which is, you can see this piece along here. You can almost pull it off, but just with a knife there, this piece, once it's trimmed up, we can use that to make some pretty good kebabs, I tell you. Always remember, start at the tail and you're going that way. Because if you go from the butt end this way, you're cutting into the grain. You want to go with the grain. You slide your knife in under the sinew. Now, one movement with the knife up. Now, all the way back in. And this way, we don't take half the buffalo with us. We've taken no meat. And we're happy about that. It's all about taking as little of the meat with it as possible. So I'm going to take this piece off here now. The butt end is going to come off. And I'll take the tail piece off here too. Now most of you, I guess, are used to going to the supermarket or the butcher and buying a nice steak like that, aren't you? And I'm going to cook two of these guys up. Those are about 210 grams each. Righto, so I have some garlic in here, and over here, this is for the spinach. So what we need to do now is we need to get in some cream. Lots of cream, right? There we go, in there. Let's grate some nutmeg in here, and we won't be shy. Down there, I've got a couple of bay leaves that are going to go in there. And now, I've got some white wine that's going to go in with the onions. This is for our tomato sauce. And you know what I'm going to get in here next? is a little bit of brown sugar. And in goes some whole peeled tomatoes. And the next thing I'm gonna put in here is I'm gonna put some white balsamic vinegar. It's that little X factor that you won't taste, you know, but you'll be like, man, this is a good tomato sauce. Now we're just gonna let it simmer away and do its thing. We're gonna get our, um, our buffalo into the oven. But I'm going to cook it on here first, sear it. Why do we sear something? Flavour. Chelsea's right. It's about flavour. What happens is the Maillard effect, which is when the amino acids work with the sugars, and that's when you get the colour, and you get that caramelisation. That's the flavour that we're getting, right? We want to season our eye fillet of buffalo. Salt, get a good, don't be shy some pepper, and you always season meat at the last minute, otherwise you're going to start curing it, aren't you? There we go, nicely seasoned on the outside. I'll just have a little drizzle of olive oil on there, like that. All ready to go on the barbie if we were at home, or in our case today, the grill. And I've got the oven set at 195 degrees already. There we go. How good does that look? Pretty good, huh? Very good. Now I want the mayo effect all around 
the buffalo, so I'm going to do all sides. Okay, so our tomato sauce isn't too far away. And what I've done is I've roasted some garlic, which is going to go into our tomato sauce. I'm actually going to turn that off now. This tomato sauce, we can use this with pasta, we could use it over chicken, we could use it in a lasagna, but the secret is a little bit of white balsamic and a little bit of brown sugar, just to sweeten it up just ever so slightly. But I've also got some basil that I'm going to get in at the last minute too, and I'm not going to be shy, there's about probably 20, 25 grams of basil that I'm just going to chop up, or you could tear it, wouldn't really matter, and it goes. And we've got some tomatoes here. Because we're doing the caprese theme, I want to roast some tomatoes, and they're vine roasted tomatoes. I want to keep the calyx on. When we cook it, I want the skin to blister up, so I prick it three times. And I want to really overcook these tomatoes, because this is going to be part of the sauce. Now, they want to roll around like that, don't they? So, I'm just cutting a little bit off the bottom there, just so they'll sit nice and flat into the oven. No oil, no nothing. They look pretty good. Let's get these guys on here. We're going to get that into the oven, and I'm guessing around 10 minutes. So, I love this watch for this, so set it now. I'll look in about 8 minutes, and that's when I'll check it. So I've got some spinach here that's been cooked, blanched, in water. And then the important thing is that you've squeezed all the water out. All right, let's get this finished now. So we're going to get our spinach in here. And you're going to give that a bit of a stir around. OK, the last thing this needs is some Parmigiano Reggiano. Good Italian Parmesan cheese, really good Parmesan cheese. There's enough heat in here to melt that Parmesan cheese. Pour that into there. Don't be shy, come on. Always make sure the lid's on and always make sure that when you turn it on it's not going to go to full bore because otherwise you have cream spinach over the entire kitchen. There we go. Now we'll get that back into the pot. You can see that these are still pretty rare. Okay, very rare. Not too much further though, and I'll start checking it for temperature. But I'm going to be looking for 57 degrees of an internal temperature. So if you want to write down some temperatures, rare is between 55 degrees and 60 degrees Celsius. It'll have an internal deep red colour with, you know, real, real juices there. It'll be a real juicy piece of meat. Medium rare is 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. Soft and springy to touch. And medium, 65 to 70 degrees. You know, an internal, you know, light pink colour, isn't it? And it's firm and spongy to touch. And if you really are one of those people that wants to go well done, 75 degrees and whatever comes after that, <laughs> and as hard as you like, but it will be firm to touch. <laughs> So a spot on 10 minutes. And I think we're looking pretty good. And we'll see what the internal temperature is. No, I don't believe that. It says 70. It's lying. Anyway, 57 degrees. Do you believe me? Okay. <laughs> That's what I reckon it is. I'm going to leave one, and I'm going to let it rest for 10 minutes. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to cover it with tin foil or put a pot on it or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it alone. This guy, I'm in a hurry. Beautifully cooked, right? Absolutely perfectly medium rare. But you watch all that juice just pour out of it. We'll come back to that in 10 minutes, and we'll see the difference. I think our tomatoes will be pretty much done now, too. They're looking good and you know you can see the sugars are now coming out of the tomatoes. They're going to be sweet and lovely to eat. And the idea is that that becomes part of the sauce and you break it down on the plate. So we've got a plate, we've got the saporoso on standby, we've got a little black truffle oil. Now we all know about truffles, right? They're a fungus that grows under the ground. 
but they're four and a half thousand dollars a kilo. <laughs> so they're pretty expensive. Liquid gold in a bottle there. But this is, you know, this is not expensive. And, you know, a couple of drops of that over your mashed potato transforms it. So let's take some of our chunky tomato into our little jar. Let's get our buffalo mozzarella in there. Nice fresh basil leaf that can sit in there. We'll pop that on the plate. Spinach into our side dish. Grab one of our tomatoes. Let's look here. We now have juice that should be in there. And it's not because we didn't rest it before we cut it. We'll take this piece, cut it in half. Look at that. Pink all the way to the edges. Looks truly spectacular, don't you think? Mm, yeah. And all the juice is still in it. You can see the juice in there, can't you? Okay, so we're going to get some drops of truffle oil on here. Our tomatoes just need a couple of drops here of the balsamic, the saporoso, and then just like that. No, I don't want to use that salt. Oh, of course. <laughs> Haven't you guys heard me harping on about why I love this salt? Don't. Okay, just a little on there, and just a little on our buffalo. There you go, guys. Bon appetit, huh?